This is the most requested video topic I get. I don't think my edits are anything earth shattering, but it's part of the process, so I will share what I do. I have some more esoteric philosophical thoughts on the subject that I'll save for the end. Uh, so if you click this to see car photo editing techniques, I'm not going to waste your time at the beginning. Uh, I'm going to get right to it. This isn't the Mark Marin podcast where you got to sit through 10 minutes of introspection. So let's lock the gates. I mean, let's go to the computer. Actually, let's go back for a sec. Just a quick note, I use Adobe Bridge with Camera Raw. I don't use Lightroom. I have nothing against Lightroom, but Bridge is better with how my brain works for managing and moving files and folders. You're not going to convince me to use Lightroom, and I'm not trying to convince you to use Adobe Camera Raw, but if you don't like Lightroom, you might like Bridge and Camera Raw. Anyway, they have very, very similar controls and sliders and functionality for editing photos. So I think a lot of the stuff I'm going to share is fairly universal. So as I said, I'm using Adobe Bridge and Camera Raw. These are all raw files. I'm making non-destructive edits. My goal is to just kind of give things an extra punch. There's nothing sacred about what the camera captures, so I don't treat it like I'm trying to do a minimal amount. I just want to make, you know, the best idealized version of reality. I don't want to I don't want to make it look like it's on another planet or another atmosphere, but I do want to make a heightened sense of reality more beautiful sense of what was there. Let's do the most <laughs> dramatic one first. Um, some people like when I shoot this really dramatic shadow stuff. Uh, this was taken in Indianapolis last year, and I guess they did an update to Camera Raw, so we've got some little helper prompts that are gonna be popping up. I'm gonna crop this a little bit. So I use uh, presets on this this stuff. I mean, it's it's basically like a in video. It would be called a LUT in uh, Bridge or Camera Raw. It's a preset. Uh, I'm gonna take that whatever that is right away. The healing brush. So I've got these presets. So I have a portrait preset that I really like. This is what I've used for years. Unfortunately, this is made by this was made by a company called Visco that no longer makes presets for. Lightroom Camera Raw. They, they only do mobile stuff now. So um, if you're looking for something similar, I mean, I would say just look for film presets. This is Portra. This is, um, you know, one of the great Kodak film stocks. So anyway, the preset, what you can see it does, is it kind of changes, it kind of alters the colors a little bit. It makes it a little bit punchier. Um, there is, you know, this, this shot needs a little bit of work. Um, so let's, let's get to it. This Ferrari F8 Tributo, I was kind of exposing for the highlights a little bit. Still got a little bit hot right there. I'm going to take out some of these little hot spots that are just a little bit too bright. Okay, that actually came out okay. You could do this not with the healing brush <laughs> much faster. Um, okay, so I'm going to treat the car as one thing and treat this black area as something else. So we're going to bump it up a little bit. Um, we're going to use, this is not the healing brush, even though the icon is right next to it. And it looks similar. This is like the local adjustment brush. So I kind of want to turn down that highlight a little bit more because it did get really hot in that exposure. Um, I like daytime photos to always be a little bit warmer then maybe it captured. I think the camera tends to capture things cool. I don't know about your camera, but my Nikon tends to lean a little bit cooler with capturing things. They've got these adjustments now, so I can just select like the whole background with a mask. Uh, is this kind of sky? No, okay, that's not sky. All right, we can just create a mask of the subject. What will that do? Hey, look at that, that's pretty smart. So the mask, we are just adjusting this mask. We can make it brighter. That's too bright, but we're going to drop the whole rest of it down. <laughs> I 
All right, let's make another mask. Okay, that way, new mask. Because there's a little bit of the stuff in here that's getting lost and I don't want that. It's very scientific mask there. Very uh, surgical. <laughs> we can brush, we can take a little bit of that away. Part of what this LUT does is it does change the colors a little bit. We're not editing the mask, we're editing the whole car, but it will adjust the color a little bit. So you can make your blue a little more aqua or a little more purple. I think this car is a little bit more blue and less green. Yeah, that looks a little better. Not really, again, this is not uh, the most precise thing. Let's do another brush mask. Not all the things I edit are like this, but this is a particularly crazy one. And I thought you guys might want to see what I did. So this mask has a setting for very dark shadow value and darker exposure. And so it's just gonna make these things disappear a little more naturally than if I were to clone them out. Okay, and then healing brush, take that out. We need to expand that mask because this is still looks a little weird. So that mask is here. Let's add to it the brush. going to take out some little imperfections in the car with the healing brush. Maybe more healing brush. Drop it down just a little bit. I still feel it's very aqua-y. Sometimes the preset will kind of subdue some colors. Take out a little bit of the color, bring up the luminance on that ground just a little bit and I still think I need a little bit of a mask to maybe on the front here just hit that a little bit to brighten it and then if you want to just adjust the color temperature or something on the on just the mask you can how do we feel about that I think that's good let's make sure the yellows are pop no not the yellow oh, okay so by turning down the concrete color I did take out this prancing horse badge oh, this was not the most precise thing I probably would do this in Photoshop but I'm trying to just stick it all in this program uh, I am mostly happy with this but I would like to have one more mask to make this section a little bit less aqua I'm aware that some people like faded blacks. I don't like that. Um, I want my black to be blacker than black. I want the shadows to be obsidian. If this particular photo was taken at this time of day without this weird shadow stuff, it would not be worth posting or sharing. It would be an ugly picture to me. But it's the shadow elements that I find interesting, and, I, and that's why I took this photo, and that's what I'm enhancing here with this edit. I think that's effective. <laughs> All right, let's do, let's look at before and after. That was before, then I did some, some real crimes with the healing brush. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's cool. I think this is a mysterious photo. I think this is not your average Ferrari F8 Tributo photo. Wow, okay, so wow, we have a lot more of these, okay. Uh, <laughs> the rest of these are really easy. This very normal photo, this was taken at the right time of day. This was after the sun, you know, was, there's no direct sunlight. So in this instance, we will apply this preset again. It, it kind of nails the red, like, right away. I, I, I like these two. These are favorites. There's, like, you know, a billion others to choose from. These are kind of my go-tos, the Portra 160 and Portra 160 minus which is which takes away a little bit of contrast 
the plus one has some contrast, the plus one minus has a little bit less. Um, and then from there, I can usually add in a little more contrast if I want it. I think again, I think the camera kind of leans a little bit towards the cool side. So I would warm this up a little bit, maybe add a little bit of that contrast. Just pay attention to the color because obviously the, the preset is going to alter the color. Part of what gives it that quote unquote film look is is sort of playing with these values and and doing things versus the stock picture. So it sometimes takes down the saturation of a certain color, so I might restore that. Like I said, I'm not exactly doing scientific color matching here. It's kind of, this is what it looked like to me, or this is what I want it to look like. Anyway, I just want it to look good. This is what the color looks like. If you're using, if you're using a different color, if you're shooting a different color, um, it, it's, if it's a different red, you know, pay attention to that. Take a couple pictures with your iPhone um, when you're there, so you kind of have a reference. Um, not that the iPhone is going to shoot the true color, but maybe you can balance the two to remember sort of what that color looked like. This was really easy. Like I said, when you shoot in the shade like this, it's going to be very flat. That's and that's part of what you want because you don't want hot spots, you don't want extreme sun, you don't want extreme lights and darks, but you need to do something probably to punch up the color and and make it pretty. So, so we're kind of we're kind of tricking the eye into giving you the vibrance and color of a of a of this if it was shot in the direct sun but without doing that and having that that harshness so we're gonna take this i am copying this style i'm gonna paste it right onto this one so we're gonna paste all these properties wow it already looks good so i don't really need to do anything that's um i might bring up the shadows just a little bit. I'm not doing tons of specific color correction. This is the same location and pretty, probably the same time of day, different day. This red, if you're familiar with Guards Red on Porsches, it's, it's a little bit more orange. So just make a note of that. We might lean it a little bit towards that way. Uh, we also did warm up the picture, so it's gonna do that. So we're gonna take that style, I'm copying the style, pasting it onto here. Um, Again, I think it looks kind of good out of the box. This one I think is actually a little too orange on the hue. This is another topic, but you know, the goal for every photo or every shoot is different. If I'm shooting a car listing, I want the photos to be impactful, but consistent. And you know, you have to show the whole car and you have to show the details. You don't want half the car to be in black shadow necessarily if you're trying to list the car. Um, so it's a little more subtle if I'm shooting for Instagram or for me I you know or sometimes editorial it depends you know I want to have a really dramatic image that tells a story I want mystery and I want you know things obscured my goal ultimately maybe I don't ever achieve this but my goal is to to not just have car photos but to have artistic photos that have cars in them that's like the ultimate goal is to have something that you know has some kind of artistic merit even though it is a picture of a car I have to do this precise, I guess. You're gonna make, people are watching me. I gotta make it, I gotta do it precise. No one would notice if I left it how it was. Yeah, I am good with this. This is easy. When it's, when it's shot right, you don't have to do a lot. It's a light touch. Okay, this one, if you watched my video about Gran Turismo photos, I mentioned that I like my night photos to be very cool and I like the day photos to be warm. I pretty much warm up daytime photos all the time. Just kind of make it a little bit of golden hour, just a little bit. But I do the opposite at night. And then we've got this disgusting light here, this yellow light. I mean, I probably had like some stupid white balance setting, but uh, when you're shooting photos, you know, the white balance is like very pliable. You can really adjust that later on. Uh, with video, not so much, as I have learned. But with photos, this can all change. So let's just apply this thing. The plus, the one not minus is way too dark. The minus is still too dark, but we're going to just 
screw with everything. And then I will take the grain off because it kind of adds a little bit of grain. So I like these night shots to be very blue. And, and especially this is um, this ring here is uh, the former Enron headquarters. Little piece of trivia. So this kind of teal. Yeah, look at how just making that, that white building look very futuristic is cool. Yeah, I mean, I think this is kind of done. You can, we're just going to make it brighter. I'm just going to sit here and keep making it brighter and bluer, if you don't mind. That's what we're doing. Okay, we'll adjust this crop here. I We definitely want to keep the road because the road, you know, gives us our sense of speed. So normally we might crop like that, but we want to keep this road here. Actually, all of it's cool. So let's let's see if we can take out. Uh, all right, let's. I think I tried to take out this blue, whatever this reflection is, and I think I completely failed. Okay, let's just let's do that as a thing. Let's. I've got Photoshop here. Let's open the Photoshop. So we are done with the bridge part on this photo. So this was the before and this is now. And I've probably like way overdone it. Um, but oh uh, yeah, if we add some magenta, it gets even whiter. That is good. I like it. So I'm going to open Photoshop and we're going to like surgically take out this blue reflection. And we're going to get in close enough that you'll see that this is not super, super sharp. But it's pretty sharp. Let's see. All right. What's the patch tool going to do for us? Ooh. That's no good. All right. So we need to preserve the ends of that. All right, let's try this. Ooh, that is pretty good. You get a little bit of blue, which we could fix with something, but that's pretty good. All right, let's, let's do this one. Mm, probably not gonna work. Okay, but um, who's gonna look at that? Uh, maybe uh, that's not good. All right. Okay. Well, the line itself is fine. So if we just isolate just the blue and then clone or patch the heal that spot healing brush. Yeah, that's fine. And then this last part, we've got... We could pull from this. We could just plop this section right onto there. And that's probably what I'll do because this is an edge and the cloning or healing or whatever is not gonna like dealing with an edge where we can just reuse it. All right, so copy, paste that. And we'll create a mask around it. We're just gonna delete the mask on parts of this. Deleted a little too much. Okay, that looks pretty good. So this is actually better than the one that I posted because I took out that blue thing. This poll really bothers me, but that is too ambitious of a project for this. So we're going to move on to the next one. Um, okay, so that one, just group that there. And then let's start with this one. So this is a different setting. This is direct sun, weird shadows, but it's not half obscured with shadow and it's not a metallic car. So I'm going to apply my preset that I like. This is pretty overexposed, I guess. I don't know what I exposed for. I guess that because the car is kind of dark value and I was exposing for the car. So the ground gets a little bit hot, drop that down, warm it up. And yeah, that's kind of it. But why would I stop there when I could keep doing stuff? Once again, I've ex I selected the subject 
and so we're gonna bump up the subject a little bit we'll revisit that and then drop down everything else all right so let's go back to the mask if someone was good at numbers math whatnot they would look and say oh I bumped this up 0.45 exposures and so I need to to you know equal those I don't I don't really subscribe to all that. <laughs> I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. So I think this looks cool. And if we wanted to, if you were so inclined, if we wanted to make this even more in shadow, we could create a thing and just make some, I think this looks good. So let's look at the before and after. Yeah, see who wants to see in the shadow when they wear? Look, there was all these ugly shrubs here, and instead of doing something about it, we just we just nuked them into oblivion. So this was obviously a little bit on the cool side. Um, this the blue is a little different, so we can adjust that, make it a little less green, a little more blue. But I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the Lancia Fulvia, by the way. Oh, we've got another Lancia Fulvia. So we're, I'm not gonna paste the settings or anything. This is another one that same car, same day, same late morning. I'm gonna apply this preset that got very green. We're gonna warm it up. We're gonna bring in some magenta to counteract the green. Increase the ex hmm. increase the exposure. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Just because it's really dark. No, we're gonna we're just gonna brush in some exposure on the subject. Let's just try this mask. This is kind of new. And so for the full picture, yeah, that's right. We're dropping the shadows even more. Uh, what do you think bugs me about this? <laughs> uh, besides this piece of trash, which I'll, I probably would crop out. Make sure that's straight. Yes, it is that sign. So we're going to go and take that out in Photoshop because I cannot let things be. So let's just look at the before and after. Let's open the Photoshop. And what method are we going to... So that one, happy with that. We made a big difference. We took out a sign. This one, now this looks a little bit overexposed. Part of it is you do have to like look at what you've done, how it fits within the set. And you can always clear the settings later so you can undo all of this majesty we did. So, I think, I think this concludes this. I'm gonna have to cut out a lot. So this is not a totally comprehensive guide. I might even do another follow-up video if there are some specific photos you wanna see me cover that I didn't do. I tried to pick a wide range, so hopefully that helps. So I was strangely not super keen on making a video showing my editing, even though a ton of people asked for this. I thought I'd be giving away too much, actually. For, for a long time, I thought my editing was kind of the secret sauce, and I was very protective of that. And then one day I realized that it's not my editing. That's not what makes me special. As I've become a better photographer, the edits have become less important because I try to capture a better image in the camera. So these lessons I've been trying to teach in all my other videos, the message is always be creative in camera, capture it correctly, and then you don't have to save it later or make magic happen in the edit. I used to always hear old pro photographers saying, get it right the first time. And for years I thought, that's fine for you, but my edits are my bread and butter. I can do anything in Photoshop. You don't understand. Stay in your lane. But those photographers were right. 
they don't mean capture the exposure perfectly or make sure the white balance is perfect. I mean, that, that helps. They're not saying don't do that, but that's stuff you can adjust easily later. The advice wasn't just about saving a little bit of time here or there. What they mean was capture it right. Be out there at the right time of day when the light is good. Be creative with how you point the camera. Find things that other people aren't seeing. Those are the things you can't adjust in Photoshop or Lightroom later. The more creative you are with the camera, the less creative you have to be with sliders later at your computer. I wanna make clear, I'm not saying editing is bad. Don't, I'm not saying don't color grade, anything like that, because it's important, but it shouldn't be the most important thing. It shouldn't be the only thing that sets your photos apart. Anyway, that's my video about my editing process. I hope this hasn't been disappointing, but you did ask for this, so you have no one but yourself to blame. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.